Assalamu alaikum. Today's lesson will be my favorite subject, Tawheed. And I miss reading the Quran to you <laughs> after I made that last lesson about my personal experience. I'm back with the pages of the only truth that matters, the Quran. And today we will be doing page 25 of Surah Al Baqarah. And the reason I chose this page, not only am I reviewing my memorization on this page, but I was annoyed today as I was realizing that the power packs that I brought with me, you might think this is irrelevant, but it is not, uh, are not useful for my new phone that I got when I came here six months ago. And I'm sure if I were more astute in technology, I would be able to figure out how to change these little, I don't know what these are called, I just see these everywhere, and they have different tips, and they need a different tarakiba, as we say in Arabic. They have to be hooked up differently, and they go into different types of batteries and different types of, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I do know that these little things change. Well, you know the Quran never changes. So when you're trying to deal with today's modernity, you're sometimes annoyed, unconfounded, but others are just annoyed that have some knowledge about this modern world. The point is they just want you to buy something else. And every time they do a, net, a new phone or a new whatever, you have to buy something else. Well, with Quran, you don't even have to buy it, period. It's free. Well, the Arabic one is. And it even says on it, not for sale. Well, the point is today, I'm going to mention the beginning of this page, things which we get for free that we should really think about. Everyone knows that Allah created the earth and skies and maintains it in its place and, you know, the night turning into the day and so forth and the tides, I often mention that. And, but this one verse, one verse, we're going to pause on this and we're going to say, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. And we're going to think about all the blessings, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa ikhtilafi layli wan nahar wal fulki allati tajri fi al bahr bima yanfa'u an nas وَمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ مَاءٍ فَحْيَ بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَةٍ وَتَسْرِيثِ الرِّيَاحِ وَالسَّحَابِ الْمُسَخَّرَ بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ Here Allah reminds us that in the creation of the earth and skies and the differing of night and day and the ships that run through the sea and what are having within them, what benefits us and what Allah sent down from the sky of water, min al and then it revives the land by it after its death. And then sprouts up from it everything. Now, kulli dabatin here refers to anything that walks upon the earth is revived by water, and that is us as well. Because Allah says in another verse, جَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ that everything alive comes from water. And if you think about it in a broader perspective, our wudu, why do we make wudu? Why are we constantly putting water on our extremities? 
uh, and on our face. It's because we are revived by that. And if you try it, you'll understand how much you are revived. What tasrif riyah? Tasrif means to let something flow, let it go. Tasrif riyah, the winds. Wasahab al musakhara bayna al sama wal ard, and the clouds that are moving between the earth and skies. These are signs. Liqaumi aqilun for people who think properly. Your aql is your mind. And Allah will say, وَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ for people with no knowledge. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادَ And there are people who take other than Allah أَنْدَادًا أَنْدَادًا is plural of nid and it means a peer, someone equal to you. And how do we know? They love them as love for Allah, meaning as love for Allah should be. And those who believe love Allah more. Ashaddu. Shaddu means a lot of something with strength. And when those oppressors see the torment, they will know that all power is to Allah. Now here's the, the word shadid again. In the previous verse it was they're much stronger in their love for Allah. But here the word shadid is used referring to shadid al adab, the tough punishment that's going to come to the oppressors. If those who were followed have nothing to do with those who followed them. In other words, on Judgment Day, they'll say, I didn't force you. I didn't tell you to follow me. You just chose to follow me because now they're petrified because <laughs> now they're witnessing al lillahi jamia. All power is to Allah. So when they walk away from those who followed them, in other words, we didn't make you do this. And they see the torment. They can see it. You know, you witness the hellfire on Judgment Day. No way out. Cut. All avenues of exit have been cut. And those who followed said, oh, if we could just have another chance, we would totally disown them. Like they are totally disowning us. And this is how Allah is showing them their deeds, surrounding them. And they are not getting out of the fire. Now, going to the fire for this is one of the ways we can appreciate our aqidah, our doctrine, our dogma. The only thing Allah does not forgive is shirk. And shirk means associating powers to him, with him, other than him, etc. You know, Allah can forgive a lot of things, big things, like murder. But he will not forgive anyone who associates any power to him. And I don't know why there's such a problem with just coming forward with this Taweed. You know, I, I don't understand why people feel that it's okay to pray to saints and they're going to help you. 
uh, to pray to the Virgin Mary and she's got some kind of power? No. I used to do that, but I didn't believe in it. I just used to do it because they told me to. <laughs> Never believed it. We even had special saints. And we even had to choose a saint's name on our confirmation day and model ourselves after her or him. And I never believed it. And that's why I was so extremely satisfied and thrilled when I was able to learn what Islam really is. Islam really is worship Allah alone and don't associate powers to him. And that's something that's never talked about on YouTube videos or on the mimbar, you know, where the sermon takes place on Friday prayer or otherwise, not publicly, perhaps privately. Why not? It's the truth that we believe. And if others believe other than that, they are free. And that's the beauty of Allah's abilities. In other words, he can do anything, he can force anyone, but he doesn't. He gives us free choice. And not only that, but those who believe that are given good lives, lovely homes, lovely families, good health, good jobs. Observe, you can observe this. It's not like a disbeliever is in misery. No, no, not here. But then in the hereafter, they are denied the paradise. However, recall, as we often say, no one knows and everyone has a chance until their dying breath. And on their dying breath, when the angel of death comes to take out their soul, it's too late. They can't change their mind then. So I prefer to read you Allah's words and explain to you Allah's words in the way I understand them. By living it, experiencing it, pondering it. And I guess you couldn't really do this unless you knew some Arabic, but I did when I read the English Quran years ago. I didn't have access to tafsir because tafsir is in Arabic. But you know, Allah knows you don't know Arabic. Do you think he's going to save all his gems just because you don't know Arabic? No. It's just that Arabic helps you understand more and better. So I just always say, keep reading Quran, keep reading Quran. If you can do it in Arabic, better. If you can't, keep reading Quran, keeping up your prayers, and Allah is going to guide you. And he's going to give you more and more and more according to how much you've done, your effort, and your sincerity. It's called ikhlas. You get more. If you do it only for Allah, and not for money, and not for fame, no recognition. If you start to care about recognition, you're already uh, in trouble. I try not to use American euphemisms. I almost just said, if you do it for other than Allah, you're dead in the water. No, that's wrong. I shouldn't be speaking to you like this. However, sometimes it, it really does fit. Don't care about any other created being. Care about the creator. And now, يا أيها الناس كلوا مما في الأرض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين إنما يأمركم بالسوء والفحشاء وأن تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون it's fitting that we end with the subject of food, which is something that occupies an extreme amount of space in our minds. 
and in our daily doings, which is why the, the subject of Ramadan, the concept of doing without for a month, is very, very useful in clearing your mind and putting you on another wavelength, let's say, away from the subject that we all are so attached to. And thinking about those who live in other places who barely can scrape up enough once a day so that they don't die of starvation. However, that is their qadr. Remember I said Allah does not oppress. And people will always say to me, well, what about the starving people in and fill in the blanks? And that's going to have to be another subject. Because there's so much to be said on that. And all I can say is one of Allah's names of his 99 that we could study are call, is called Al-Adl, the fair. Allah is fair to everyone everywhere, all the time. although the disbelievers won't understand it. But I'm going to try to do as much as I can with the Tawheed, which is of necessity that you understand Allah's names, Asma'al al-Husna. So Allah tells us here, eat of the good things that Allah has allowed you to have. Halalan ta'ibah. Don't follow in Satan's footsteps because he is an open enemy to you. He'll slip in to not only eating haram like blood and pork and anything sacrificed to other than Allah, but overspending, overspending on food, showing off about how wealthy you are when giving people food, holding back from sharing food to needies. Interesting how Allah is connecting here. The concept of eating good food and the concept of not following in the footsteps of Satan. Why? And the last verse is, he truly orders you to evil. Soup, evil. Fahsha. Fahsha is like open wrong, that you're, you're walking around uh, rejoicing in the evil that you're doing and almost um, artistically, I can't, I have to be careful because if I actually say some examples, which I could say 10 right now off the top of my head, YouTube might shut me down. <laughs> they can say whatever they want, but I think I might try it next time just to see what will happen. But we all know what it means, it means lewdness, openly proclaimed, exhibited, all right. Or, وَأَن تَكُولُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعَلَمُونَ Or to say about Allah what you do not know. This is walking in the footsteps of Satan. Saying what you do not know. Now, I'd like to just return to something here that I think is interesting and you might like it. Uh, when I was a child, as I told you, I was raised Catholic and there were all sorts of statues made of the saints that we were supposed to worship and pray to, to obtain what we wished. And one of these saints was called St. Christopher and my dad would always put a statue of him on the dashboard of his car. All, all Catholics did, observant Catholics, because they were told that St. Christopher would protect you in your car. So. Muslims, as you know, we don't pray to anyone but Allah and we don't use statues. It's forbidden to use statues. Uh, here's what we do. 
Now we have this little prayer that we say, and I'm telling you this prayer because when I first started reading you this page, I was mentioning all of Allah's good things that he gives us. And I will just go over this now and then refer it to what I'm trying to say to you about the car. Sahab al Musakhara Clouds Sahab Al Musakhara What does this mean Musakhara Bayna Samai wal Ard? They are moving between the earth and sky. Now I'm using this verb Sahara for you, and I would suggest that those of you who <coughs> have children in middle school or I think it might be even third grade, when they learn the um the cloud formations and how the rain is formed within the clouds, etc. Uh, it will be so interesting for you because it goes exactly along with this. But for me, I'm just, you know, I'm not scientifically very informed. I'm really not. I just was never really into it. But I am into languages and how the words are formed and how the letters are formed. Sahara. Sahara el clouds. Okay. What Allah's causing them to move. This is what Egyptians say, well, I lived in Egypt, but all Arabs say this, and they learn it very well from the time they're young. When you get in the car, either the driver who turns the ignition, or the passengers who know very well this, they say this little dua. A dua is an invocation, a call upon Allah to help you. They say, I say, Subhanallah sahara lana hada wa ma kunna lahu mukrinin wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun The first part Subhanallah alladhi sakhara lana hada We're praising Allah because he caused us sakhara lana he made it for us hada meaning the car or the plane, or the boat, rowboat even, whatever you're moving along in. You praise Allah, you glorify his name for doing this for you. And then you say, And without this, we wouldn't be able to do this. And we are returning to Allah. So we recognize Allah's power to let us move, and we also recognize that we're going back to him. So if the car doesn't move, let's say, just head on collision. If you said that invocation, you know that's what Allah decreed for you. Interesting, last week I was riding with a friend and suddenly the car just conked out, as we say. I'm sure most of us have had that happen. But we had said the dua, so we didn't mind. We were stuck on the side of the road, and we were stuck there for about a good half hour with two children, one little, like almost four, and the other one, she was maybe 10. And uh, we weren't worried about it. Allah stopped the car and Allah will bring either her older son or the mechanic or no tow trucks. They don't really, I haven't seen that here, tow trucks, but no problem because we recognized Allah is the one who sakhara lana hada. So we couldn't have done it without him. And uh, actually it's exactly time for the driver. And I hope Allah will sakhara the car. Nothing worse than car problems, right? 
We all know, we've, we've been there and we've done that. But when you have Tawheed, it helps. Because Allah controls every single atom and moves it as He will. And when you're a Muslim, you, you're supposed to have this mode of acceptance. That's what Islam means, submission, acceptance. And when you accept Allah's decree, as irritating as it might be when your car breaks down, that doesn't mean you just sit there and say, oh, my car broke down, poor me. No, you make steps to fix it, but you don't really become angry or depressed or sad. It's an Islamic world's view, which frees you from a lot of anxiety. And seriously, Corona? Corona? Hmm. Allahu Akbar.